So this is going to be a pretty unique video as far as the videos on my channel go, and I'll tell you why. Recently, when I was moving to this apartment, I went to visit my grandparents, and they gave me some of my old scorebooks in chess. So here, growing up in the United States, uh, you record all of your moves on, you know, little notepads like these. Uh, wherever you guys are in the world, you, yours might be a little bit different. Uh, and I basically just wanted to share a piece of my life with some of you and take you through what it was like growing up uh, playing chess. I played my first competitive chess tournament when I was seven, uh, actually right after I turned seven. And one interesting thing that you could know and should know about my chess career is that I started playing in 2003, right? And I was seven years old, so seven to eight. Uh, but the most games I ever played in one full year of tournaments is 129. And the average tournament is about four to five games long. So think about that, 12 months, that's not a lot of chess for somebody who grew up playing uh, chess as a you know potential career and ultimately became a title player. Uh, I, I had a lot of dips. Uh, I quit chess several times in my life, uh, most notably when I was 12 years old, right around 2008. Uh, and when I say quit, it just means that I played the least amount of games uh, for two years straight. I almost didn't play. I basically played for fun and I didn't study. Uh, some of my peak ratings are available here. And for today's video, I basically just wanted to take you guys through some of those games uh, over my years. The first tournament game that I ever played went like this. It was actually a fried liver, and I played it in the Susan Polgar Chess Club uh, in Queens, in Forest Hills, New York. I played a fried liver, and back then this was uh, the cutting edge stuff. And in this position, uh, I played knight takes f7, which is the fried liver trap, and then checked my opponent, uh, king, and, uh, king and knight under attack, and here black is supposed to go here and guard this. But in that game, my opponent went back, and that's actually just checkmate. <laughs> so. This is, uh, this is the first tournament game I, I ever played. The first tournament I ever played, I won all my games. And the second tournament I ever played, I lost, I think, all my games, or maybe made one draw. I was really scared because I had to play in a higher section. This game that I wanted to share with you is a game that I played when I was seven years old. Seven. And this was like my seventh or eighth tournament ever. It was October 2003, and I have it here with me. Uh, it was played at the Hunter college championships uh, and and hunter is one of the biggest scholastic chess tournament sites in new york we used to drive from new jersey with my dad fun fact the person who runs the hunter chess program is uh, sunil wehrmantri uh i hope i'm pronouncing that last name i'm trying to do it as correctly as i can and that's actually hikaru's stepdad uh and he talks about sunil quite a bit so i wanted to share this game with you very long game uh, i was about 1100 at this point so it was an advanced Karakhan, so I played e5, he played bishop f5. Uh, my opponent is like 10 years old, probably. And I played bishop f4. <laughs> uh, I didn't know many openings back then. Uh, and he played e6. I played knight f3, c5, c3. So, so far, so good. Uh, this is normal. Oh, no, no, sorry. I didn't play, no. I didn't play c3. What am I doing? No, I played c4. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Knight c6, knight c3, dc4, bishop... Wait, I just hung this pawn. What am I doing? What? Okay, that's not... Just move the knight. Oh my god, I took. What? What am I doing? Am I throwing the game? What is going on? Oh my goodness, I'm 1100 at this point? Wait, knight takes d4? And then here I realized that I blundered, so I played bishop e3. Okay, well, first things first. If you're going to play the advanced Karakhan and bishop f5... um. You should play knight f3, bishop e2, and then castle, or you should play for a quick c4 with knight c3, or my favorite line, h4. Advanced Karakhan is the best weapon, but not the way I played it. So he plays knight c2 check, I play king e2, uh, he takes my queen, which actually is not right. I don't think that he should be doing that. And then he plays, wait, what? What is going on here? Bishop b3, knight c2, king e2, queen takes d1, bishop b4, wait, what? Bishop b4. And then I played bishop b5 check. That's definitely the best move. Because this king is stuck in the center and has nowhere to go. So he goes king f8. I played a3. Bishop c3. Oh my goodness, and I'm a genius. What is white's best move in this position, my friends? It's definitely not to take back this bishop. You gotta look for more, more than that, because black is up six points right now. It's bishop to c5 check. And after knight e7, you gotta go after this knight. 
And that's what I did. I played Rook D7. Wow, go me. I did something right. G6. <gasps> now we take check. Oh my gosh, I'm in business here. Bishop F6 check. Oh my gosh, King H6. Now, question for those of you watching. Should I take this or should I take this? What do you guys think? What do you think? <laughs> it's a tough question. Taking this is better. Uh, because this traps his knight. His knight can now no longer leave. My bishop is actually a lot better than this rook. Uh, you might say, well, bishop is three, rook is five. Yeah, but the rook hasn't moved. And this bishop is destroying this king's safety. So I have moves like this coming in the future. It's definitely better to take on c3. But in the game, what I probably thought of was that if I take and he takes, then I take. And that's probably correct. If this, then this, then takes, that's correct. But I think black probably has like a check here to win material. But that's, that's I am me looking at this game. I think in the actual game, we got takes, 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 and this is hanging. Oh, and I defended it by, whoa, rook takes b7. Look at me flexing. Wow, rook takes b7, except that's not a good move. That is not a good move. What is the best move here for black? Removing the defender. Bishop to e4, and uh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> if I take one of these pawns, he just takes my bishop, and I can't, I can't stay guarding my rook. I mean, my bishop with my rook. So bishop b4. Very tactical themes all over these games. Pretty funny. Um, knight b1. <laughs> That's a fancy move. <laughs> All right, I pushed. I can't take because his bishop is protecting it. I'm going to go until I can't see the notation anymore. Rook takes f7. How did I... Okay, I don't want to spoil the result. I, I guess I just did. I don't think I won this game. Bishop h3. Rook g3, bishop f5. Okay, how am I not checkmating this guy? Okay, so I don't have a mate, which means that I should take this pawn and try to make a pass pawn here. So what did I do? Wow, I did that. Go me. No wonder I became an IM. Rook d8. Okay, rook d7, that's a great move. Rook a8, because obviously I want to trade pieces now that I'm winning. This is also a good... <gasps> Wait, I blundered a fork. What am I doing? That's not a good move. Did he see it? Oh, he missed it. Wait, what? King d4, rook a3? Wait, king d4, rook a3, and I didn't take? Oh my gosh, in this position, I played king here? What am I doing? Am I crazy? Why did I play king e3? What was I even trying to accomplish? And then, and then he played knight e4 check. And then here I still could have moved. But instead I did this, take, take, and take. And it's, what? Oh my gosh. Bad, bad, bad. King e3, knight e4. I think there's like a mosquito flying in my room at the time of recording this video. It's a lot of adventures here. Knight c5, king d4, knight b3. I mean, it's still... Still a game. King c3, knight c5, king b4. I'm going to try to speed run through this. Knight d3, king a5. Uh-oh, that's very bad. He didn't take this pawn for some reason. He played king g... He's winning now. He's winning. He's winning. He just, just take all my pawns. That's what he has to do. He has to take all my pawns. King g5, king b6, king f4, c5. And by the way, if you want to skip ahead in the video to the next game, you're more than welcome to do so. I will put timestamps. Bishop e2, here, here. Okay, suddenly this is good for me again. I'm not completely lost. King e3, I'm amazed by the way that seven-year-old me found all these moves. e5, king g2, oh, he just trades the pawn. Yeah, this is a drawn endgame now. Um, because two on one and it's just impossible for him to promote here. h5. King f2, king h3, king g1, he plays h4. I, he could have made it himself, potentially. All right, and on to the next page, move 51. Bishop a6, look at me going for checkmate. I didn't get it. Bishop f5, bishop b7, g5, bishop c6, king g4, bishop g2, king h5, bishop c6. Wow. And this is just a draw because there's no way in for him here. Here, here, here. Now, please, play, please tell me I played this move. I did not. He did g3, take, take. Bishop b7. And then I wrote, look, this is so adorable. I wrote, he offers draw. That's what I wrote. I don't know if you guys can see that. But I wrote, he offers draw. And that was that. <laughs> Amazing. Um, that was me at seven. And this whole scorebook actually has a lot of games of me, you know, playing against people who are seven. My dad would write half the stuff. The second scorebook is pretty interesting. In 2005... I convinced my dad to sign me up for a tournament called World Open. And World Open is the... 
Oh, I missed the mosquito. I'm telling you, this is a super adventurous video. I've never actually slapped a mosquito on stream or recording. Anyway, um, well, this is will just make for a more enjoyable viewing experience. So I, I convinced my dad to play in a section which was under 1600. And the first place of World Open is like $10,000. And you know what my rating in the under 1600 section was? 1599. And in the fourth round, I played a guy named Kyron Griffith from California. Now, Kyron was my age. He was like the same age, uh, nine, 10 years old. And the craziest thing about Kyron is that we played, and I'm gonna show this game to you next. Um, and I, I had the white pieces. Uh, and Kyron and I are friends to this day. We did not stay friends as a result of that tournament, but, I, but Kyron came to uh, New York to uh, study. He went to Columbia University like three or like five or six years ago. And I ran into him at the Marshall Chess Club in New York City. And we played against each other a few times and we hung out. We, uh, you know, we kind of kept in touch again since then. And it's just crazy how, how chess connects people just across, you know, first of all, generations, but also just over the course of time. I mean, years, you know, we both stuck to the game. And uh, for this game, Kyron is going to be the villain uh, in round four of the World Open. At this point, I'm, uh, I'm nine. I'm nine years old and I'm rated 1600. So... Uh, e4, c5, and my handwriting was a little bit better, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Knight c3, d6. So I was playing the close Sicilian. I was playing the Grand Prix attack with knight c3 and f4 versus the uh, Sicilian defense. Highly recommended. Highly, highly, highly recommended. Uh, just tried to make a move again for myself. So I have four knight c6, knight f3, g6. So it looks like he's a dragon player. I played d4. Whoa, I'm aggressive. I'm an aggressive player. Uh, you're not supposed to combine these moves. It's a little bit too weakening. So here, here, bishop g7, bishop e3. The reason why this is bad is because black can just play knight f6 and try to go for knight g4. Did he do that? No, he played e6. This isn't good because he just blocks his bishop. And that move also weakens that pawn, and probably knight b5 is just already winning. It's just interesting, like, you can throw a Sicilian player off their game, and you can get a winning position very early. But it doesn't quite work if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, so against e6, I just played bishop b5. You know, I was just trying to develop my pieces. Bishop d7. I took, he took. Uh, again, that's a weakness. I can retreat and hit. I probably castled, right? Yep. Now what did I do? So I've got all my pieces out. What do I do? Knight d e2. To hit this. He goes here. Ooh, look at me. Bishop d4. That's a great move. Trading off this bad bishop. Takes takes castles. Okay, white is better. White is better, but I, I need to start, you know, hitting the weaknesses. And I did that. Rook d1. d5. Okay. Now, d5. What do you guys think is the best move here? There's no way I played it. Oh, <gasps> I did. Oh my goodness. Wait, I'm so proud of baby Gotham. Oh my gosh. Wait, this is incredible. You guys should try to figure out what the best move here is. Pause it. Go. I'll wait. The best move here is not to take or push. It's actually to take advantage of the recently weakened c5 square and to just put the queen there. And that's what I played in this game because it attacks the knight. And queen b6, I can't take the knight. Now, what is white's best move? And I actually played it again. Wow. Try to find white's best move here. It, it's not to take because then you're just helping him with the structure. It's the move knight a4 which hits the queen, and if he takes me, which is what happened in the game, now my knight dominates on this dark square. This is an outpost square, and it forces him to play the move bishop c8. Wow. My next move is bad. I mean, here I should just shut him down and then put my knight in the center. But I played knight g3, which is not a bad move. Um, but I, I think I gave him a little bit of too much. Yeah, so he goes rook b8. I played b3, so he can't take my pawn. Oh, but oh my gosh, that is not a good move. Knight d5? C4. Oh, wait, no, that hangs it. No, don't, don't do C4. Rook Fe1. Wait, but that hangs this pawn. Doesn't it? Am I crazy? King H8, C4. Why did I really... What? Did I just miss this? Knight F6. Look at this positional domination. And I have Knight D7 coming. Knight F6. And now... Wait. Wait a second. Am I confused? Did I confuse something? Oh, I think I miswrote a letter. I think in this position, he played bishop e8. 
And all the same stuff happened. Amazing. I just couldn't write back then. I wasn't very good at that yet. So here, 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 here. And then rook c8. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Knight b7, rook c7. What am I doing with these knights? Am I zigzagging? Wait, oh, I just went back? What? What was that? King g7? Why did I go back? Don't just... What? Oh, no. What am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I going backwards? h6. Okay, kick this knight out. Good. I like that. Knight h3, king here. Okay, don't take. Or maybe take and go knight e4? I don't know. I don't know. Knight g5. Take. <gasps> Baby Gotham just found something that adult Gotham didn't even see. In this position, white to move. What's the tactic? Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Oh my gosh, white to move. Baby Gotham. Rook takes e6. <gasps> what a move. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, this game was 60 moves long. We're gonna, we're gonna finish this game. If he takes, I go check, triple fork. And so he played king h6, and I went here, and he went here. Wait, this is winning. Just go in. Just go in. King f2. Okay, rook e5. Not a bad move. Can't take. Protected. b4, a5. Oh god, he wants me to take that. Just play a3. Okay. f5. Crazy. My gosh, what a game between two child prodigies, huh? We both became title players. Take, take, bishop f7. Okay, he's activating his bishop and he's going after me. b5, thinking I'm a genius. Well, I, I guess my logic was takes, takes. Now he gives me a check. I played king d1, cb5, cb5, rook c8. Okay, did I block with the rook? Yes. He goes, check. Did I move my king? Oh, you gotta go toward the pawns. There is no way king c1 is a good move. You need to go toward the pawns. Endgame skill. I played king c1. Maybe I just can't write again. Bishop e8. Knight b... That is creative. If takes, takes, takes. Wow. I mean, I'm just gonna be down a pawn. Uh, all of that happened. Knight e6. Bishop c4 hits my knight. Knight d4, king h5. Okay. So, we really messed up here. We need to bring our king if we have any chance of defending this endgame. And notice that that is exactly what he does. He has to bring... Oh, but I have knight g1. Wait, this is still not so... Here, here, here. Yeah, that's probably winning. Active king in the endgame. Extremely important. And in this game, he was just better than me. f3. Wait. Something's wrong with this move. Isn't this just a barrier? Hold on a second. King e3? What? Bishop c6, king f2. King f4. Uh, check and go back. Okay, h3. Bishop b7. <gasps> I zugzwanged myself! Oh no, I have no moves now! Oh, baby Gotham, what did you do? Oh no, I ran out of moves! The last move that I played stopped me from making moves. Now if I go here, he just walks in and he wins everything. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. I had to give him a check. And when he moves, I just go back. And he, he just can't do anything. Like, this is not Zugzwang because I have king e3. So these are the two moves I'm const- Oh, that is brutal. I mean, my god. Good thing I got revenge on Kyron later in life. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, well, this is just two games from my, uh, my childhood. <laughs> uh, and they were, they were pretty interesting. I mean, both of them I had the white pieces when I was seven, when I was a little bit older, nine years old. Let me know if you think that I should do a little bit more with this series, you know? Kind of like play Magnus style, uh, where I just look through uh, games of me kind of getting older uh, and just sharing pieces of my, you know, of my history in chess. Yeah. I don't have much more else, much, much, uh, much more to say. More videos will appear on that side as part of the end screen. I've got openings courses you can check out and a Twitch channel if you don't already in the description below and a Discord. The Discord's great. We have almost 7,000 people. So if you like watching the videos, you like commenting, consider getting Discord. It's a very cool way to just socialize with other people uh, in a pretty w welcoming community. Uh, and that's it. I'll see you in the next video.